Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is Market Check brought to you once again by Because Bitcoin. The title of today's stream is Bitcoin Having is Bullish. Why are you scared? And that's something that we ought to talk about, right? Because there's a lot of people that are still kind of scared. But again, Bitcoin having is bullish. Why are you? There's no reason to be afraid. There is certainly no reason to be afraid. We are now above the previous, again, above the previous cycle, all-time high of 69K. We have also just flipped our Q2 open, which has been a very, very important level that we have had eyes on. And we're going to talk about where we're going, potentially, all that and a lot more on today's show. We should have a couple more team members joining us. But again, guys, thanks so much for being here. Before we get too deep into the show... Do me a solid. Maybe you're watching live right now. Maybe you're going to be watching later on a recording uh, a recording of this on YouTube. Do me a solid. Hit that like button, guys. And also, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that subscribe button. All right. We are live Monday through Friday at 10.55 a.m. Eastern time. Talking markets, talking charts, having great discussions. And again, thank you guys so much for the overwhelming support. We are slicing through levels like a hot knife through butter here, literally on the chart, but in a different sense for our YouTube growth. So again, please continue to help support us. Like and subscribe, and we're going to continue to drop that alpha on you guys for probably upwards of 90 minutes at least today. We we have we certainly have a great show planned. So without further ado, Tucker, our chief propagandist here at Because Bitcoin is cooking up something in the charts. Tucker, do me a solid, man. Narrate what you're working up for us right now. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Yeah, guys. I mean, this is uh it's it's becoming pretty reminiscent of 2020, and we've talked about that a ton, but we have seemingly put in a higher low on somewhat of a macro time frame. The daily time frame is is macro to me at least. Um Hello. Oh good. What's up, Jackus? Hey Jackus. We're live, yeah. brother. We're live. Um, right yeah so i mean look i think i think we look good here um i would love 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 for us to close above this white line which has been a bit of a ceiling on this in this little range we've we've developed but we did come back we tested that golden pocket bounced right out of it so i think we look good i know we've got some uh interesting astrology today and last night we had some somewhat bearish astrology we'll see if any of that plays out but to me the chart looks pretty good here the chart looks pretty good um so if we can if we can continue closing above this little this little ceiling we've put in i would expect us to kind of grind and then eventually pop once we once we break that high but yeah we'll have to see because bitcoin dominance also looks pretty pretty bullish here guys uh when you just said that, Tucker, when you said because Bitcoin dominance, it was just me thinking about like mm. our company ascending in like the the ethos of crypto companies, like our dominance as a company is going up because this Bitcoin is also, dominance. <laughs> this is also a factual statement. So <laughs> it applies Would to it? both. Yes. Can, can, can we have a ticker BB.D? <laughs> BB .d. you know we could do that on bb terminal is like combine all the social medias of like the big crypto media companies and then have like a dominance on how our company is doing and like wow. absorbing market share we could. because I, bitcoin dominance wow i need that side i need a tradable chart of that because i'm gonna put a 100x leveraged long <laughs> yes we'll we'll have devs do something all right we'll, we'll get all it right done. We'll get it done. To, to to that point though, Tucker, I would say Ethereum is kind of kind of signaling the same thing as what we're seeing on BTC, and that that this market's going to continue up and continue up in a big way. I mean, the frat that we we discussed just literally the other week is playing out to a T on the current. Which conference. fractal? Uh the pennant. Sorry, the pennant, not the fractal. On ETH. On ETH, yes. It is. It is playing out. Look at this thing. Will did map this out for everybody live a few times last week. I mean, this basic. is the most obvious long. If, if you were to <laughs> zoom out again, like, like, tell me how this chart doesn't continue to open eyes. Like the the it's legit like equities in uh, fall two thousand twenty three. 
you know that it's gonna maybe take some more time who knows but then you're gonna get the ripper to 7k or something at minimum yeah, yeah, well, and 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 that's when the real fun for altcoins starts, Jackus, is when ETH is in price discovery, man. That's I am when ready. <laughs> that's when you see that's when you see like like others dot D go crazy. Actually, Tucker, would would you be so kind to maybe try to put that on the bottom? Maybe go to like the the three day chart just so it's a little bit bigger. Um, and then in the upper left corner, add another ticker in the upper left corner and do others dominance. Because you can see that, um, yeah, there we go, man. New pain or say, yeah, yeah, no, new pain is fine. New pain is fine. Uh -oh. Let's get the Vu Manchu off, expose of my Vu Manchu. <laughs> <laughs> but mm -hmm. so, this, this bottom chart that Tucker's showing here, guys, is it's the top, so it's, it's the entire crypto asset class minus the top 10 tickers by name, which is like Bitcoin, ETH, Sol, BNB, Tether, whatever, the top 10 by market cap excluded represented as a percentage of the total crypto asset class so it's a fancy way to basically just look at and analyze what percentage of crypto your smaller altcoins represent and if you look at last cycle you can see pretty clearly that once eth got into price discovery what happened to others dominance so when eth goes into price discovery your smaller altcoins you know just go nuts you know and become a much bigger representation of your portfolio and also um you know all of crypto right so once that happens for eth i'm i'm expecting others dominance to go straight up as well i don't know what you guys think but that's it, interesting too because we saw agreed. like as eth was approaching price discovery this fell off a cliff which we're not really seeing i mean we could see you know more chop or whatever but Others dominance really fell off a cliff while ETH was ripping here, which is what's happening now. But you know, if it were to do the same thing, it would be like that, you know. So that's that's strange that it did that. I mean, I guess ETH probably was just a liquidity way, vacuum, but the way it could play out is that ETH like for, uh, starts to go on its own, kind of steals this show for a little. You know just a little while the others stay kind of the same on the usd pair and then ease kind of stops you know we could be looking seven eight k or something and that at the point the others will fly but that could mean that others dominance spike down you know yeah we're, we're yeah. like we're like, we're like the others do not fall in uh the dollar terms they kind of just like lose the dominance relatively for, for a little and then go you know and yeah, Tucker, something to note about this chart is what would really send others dominance down. It wouldn't imply altcoins bleeding necessarily. It would just imply Bitcoin stealing the show again. Because if you look at Bitcoin dominance, the drop in others dominance lines up with the spike, the, the final spike, the final deviation high on Bitcoin dominance last cycle that we were looking at. So mm -hmm. if Bitcoin dominance spikes to 57, 58 percent. And then we nuke from there you'd see others' dominance probably drop like it did last cycle. Um, but I, I, I think the, the real alpha here, for the most part, at least from what I'm seeing and, and what I've been, this is why I've been keeping an eye on these specifically, is that you're, you're going to get into that period relatively soon of just uh, outperformance of, of altcoins, right? And, and yeah. I would say Bitcoin's going to make its move and then even, no matter how much more Bitcoin makes more moves, the altcoins are going to dominate Bitcoin beyond that. And I think that we'll probably see that period move up and we'll probably see Bitcoin move up to that 100K marker. And even if Bitcoin does continue to something like 200K, for instance, we'll still see altcoins ultimately outperform Bitcoin the rest of the way up. Can you, can you put Bitcoin on the chart, please, Tucker, as well? So it seems like uh, the top and bot, like the bottom for others' dominance came when BTC topped around 30K, basically, which is yeah. just slightly above all time high, about above its prior cycle. Time high. Yeah, because what Max was saying about in USD prices, right? Even though others' dominance dropped here, USD was still going up, right? And that was the last spike of Bitcoin dominance before it nuked. 
and and that yeah. lines up perfectly. Just like look at ETH USD here, Tucker. Like once ETH gets into price discovery, like that's the go signal, bro. Like that's mm -hmm. like that's it. And that's I it. would the argue ETH is like right there, right? That like yeah. this kind of chop below, yeah. you know. Probably somewhere in there. I mean, it could even be in there, but I would argue it's probably at like a thousand bucks because what is that a forty percent pump? Yeah. to its all time high back then. Yeah, it's literally the same. <laughs> it's literally the yeah. same, guys. So, yeah, the fun has not begun. There is no second best. All right, that's it for today, guys. Right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Like and subscribe before you go. <laughs> it's going up a lot. That's all that matters. Buy a lot of shit and let's go. And that's yeah. the thing, too, is like, again, we only have a couple examples of this. Like, you could scroll back to the previous cycle, like 20, 2016 through 2017, and you would see that more or less the same thing happened again in 20. You need to put it in log mode, obviously, but, um, you know, you could see that we do have a two data points to go off of here, which is, again, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's enough, right? It's not like we have 100 years of data here. This is crypto. So we have to work with what we have, which is limited data because it's a fresh asset class. Um, but we are seeing the stage set for more or less comparable price action that we've seen in, in previous cycles. Like, Bitcoin dominance looks like it's trying to distribute. Maybe it deviates up once more. Maybe it doesn't. ETH is lagging Bitcoin like it always does at this phase of the cycle. Um, and, and just to be clear, like anything for ETH and Bitcoin too, below like 12 months out from a Bitcoin halving is kind of like, it feels like it's very expansive while you're in the moment because you've been through a bear market and it's nice. But people forget the magnitude and the power of like a real crypto parabola. And that doesn't happen until everything's in price discovery, like Bitcoin and ETH. And a majority of the returns for crypto actually happens for alts and Bitcoin and ETH, everything, once we're in price discovery and everything below that is just kind of like a very slow stair step up that takes a long time. People continue to kind of FUD and be nervous. Um, but then once you get into price discovery on Bitcoin, definitively, like not a sweep of 69K previous cycle all time high, but like we blast through 75 or 80K with gusto and ETH is at, you know, 5K. That is when your altcoins will start. You'll wake up and it'll be up like 85 percent just just on a whim. Right. Like, the, you know, those kind of days we've all been there. They happen every few years. But that happens when we finally get ETH above price, you know, at the previous cycle, all time high. So a majority of the returns, if this cycle is not materially different than last cycle or the one before two cycles ago, then again, we still, we're, we're still in the early innings of a bull market and the best is yet to come. And that's my, that's where I, that's where I'm at personally. Like, I think that we are just getting started here. So I'm, I'm on the same page and it also, kind of confirms what I kept on saying is that for majority of alts to outperform Bitcoin, we still need ETH to outperform. And when that happens, I think the rest of the alts, just as here, you know, the others will catch up as well. By the way, Tucker, can you also put against, just, just keep the ETH chart there on the 3D and put NASDAQ after the dot-com bubble next to it? on the three week. So like I down here. Yes. Oh, I see. Oh, no, no, no. You, you have to this. put it in. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think if you double click on the East USD chart, you will hide all those others. So you don't have to uh, put them away if you double click. Yeah, exactly. And then go on a three week on the Nasdaq chart. Three week? I can give you two week, Jack. I will give you two weeks. <laughs> two weeks should be all right, too. Uh, and then I just wanted to keep it like 3D and 3 you week. Know? <laughs> yeah. And then go, yeah, exactly. And what I want you to see is, and then go more to the right. Wow. Right. You seeing that? 
That's crazy, man. It's like an expedited version of that sell-off from the dot-com bubble. And I think we are around that, you know, four to four K to four point four K cluster on East right now. Yes. Drag your ETH USD chart down, Tucker. So the highest is, line. Is, you you can also okay. do a one line on the Nasdaq chart, and that comes from the complacency shoulder. That is crazy, man. That is an absolutely wild chart. And I know, Jack, as you showed us that at the lows, by the way, when ETH is at like fourteen hundred bucks. I remember we did a stream. Not fourteen hundred bucks. I did it at at the very low, the exact low. Nine hundred bucks. Miko bottom. <laughs> the the Pico bottom. I shared that correctly. But uh, yeah, exactly. You you see that? That's yeah, fucking that's crazy. That and is look, fucking look at the, crazy. And and look at the absolute numbers of the dollars there too. Tucker, yeah. we need some fractals. We need some fractals, bro. Need some fractals, bro. Massage, massage, please. We need it. Oh man, it's gonna be hard because. ETH did this thing so fast. I'm just gonna. I don't even know where this goes. If, but. if there's anybody in this on this planet that can massage this fractal, brother, it is you. We have confidence in you. And imagine, guys, if ETH does this. Imagine what does that mean for coins like ETH and Pepe and Andy? You know, essentially. Mm -hmm. mm. Controversial, Jackus. How dare you mention that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 Dude, imagine everybody, Tommy, fudded ETH so hard and it literally just goes to like 30k. Imagine. <laughs> well, I said this on the after. Let me let me just say, I, I I did say on the morning call, I've been fudding the crap out of ETH while simultaneously buying a ton of ETH beta over the last <laughs> few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think I think Tommy fuds ETH not because he's bearish ETH, but because he just finds it entertaining. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> But, With but, that but, in but, mind, guys, do you think that Kramer, Jim Kramer, just uh, counter trade his own bakes? <laughs> Dude, what if? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What if he actually owns a lot of shares of like the inverse Kramer ETF? Yeah. That'd be so what, funny. What, what if, he like, it's, it's his, what it's if, like, ETF. and what if, like, Peter Schiff has shit tons of BTC? Oh, you know he does. With as much as he talks about it, he yeah. definitely. Uh, his son is like really big into Bitcoin, right? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I'd definitely be peer pressuring my dad to buy Bitcoin <laughs> if my dad was Peter Schiff. <laughs> Imagine the conversation, right? You have the family supper and. <laughs> 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 Do you know what meme I'm talking about with those chairs when there is like that, you know, the, the, those guys with those mustaches? I, I do not know what show that was from, but the, the, where there is like the guy with the mustache and he's throwing that chair over his son or something. Oh, yeah. It's the pawn shop guys, I think. Yeah. I oh, think wait. So. <laughs> uh, I know what you're talking about, though. I don't know. I don't know if it's. It, it reminds me of like that pawn shop show, but I don't think that's what it is. I could totally I imagine that being Peter Schiff dead and Peter Schiff young man, and, you know, Peter Schiff son, and they're like, <laughs> "Gold is going up. No, Bitcoin is going up. You don't get it." <laughs> so the chairs of him. You buy gold. No, you buy Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> And there's that one dude at the table just shilling meme coins. <laughs> <laughs> there's always that guy. Bro, there was someone put the funniest. Okay, what is that Spider Man meme with the, the redheaded chick like defending Peter Parker? Oh, yeah. And then they put the comment over it. And it was like, he's not gambling, yeah. he's buying meme coins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in our Discord put that to me, and I was like, this is literally my wife just, like, defending me to, to my in-laws. Like, He's not gambling. It's called meme coins. You don't get it. Oh Let me see God. if I can do it. Do any of you guys have that save? That is literally so funny. I, I, I remember that meme. I, I've seen it. That said, Someone made you know, it. that said, Max, if you think about it, you have, like, way higher you know, percentages of winning in meme coin than betting in lottery. 
and I think people sure. are getting this. You know, not to mention, not to mention that you have an expiry date on a lottery ticket, but you don't have an expiry date on a meme coin, and you know you can just buy it and hold it for several years, and it probably like even if it doesn't bump, you know, if you just throw some bucks into some of these, then maybe it doesn't do anything, but maybe like in a year, who knows when it suddenly pumps out of nowhere and just just that again there is no expiry date on holding a meme coin unless it gets rocked you know but uh you kind of you know that's like lottery ticket it gets rocked every single day you bet on it <laughs> so <laughs> they are correlated though they are correlated i mean this generation has like the volume on sports gambling and lottery and, and lottery tickets in general is increasing at a almost parabolic rate, which you have to imagine to a large degree is going to be correlated to the, uh, you know, the advent of meme coins here over the next few years. Indeed. Man, this chart, look at that. Like, like, like you see that quote unquote resistance. It's mm -hmm. the cheeto on the door. It's the cheeto on the door. <laughs> Tucker, I just sent you the meme. Can you, I texted it to you. Can you put the meme up on the chart with the caption above it? I need everyone to see this, bro. It, it, it's gold. It is absolute gold, man. It is so funny. <laughs> and just how upset he looks. Just how upset he looks in the background. <laughs> yes. Hang, hang on. on. He looks so upset. <laughs> he looks so sad. But you got to put the caption above it. You got to copy paste that. You just have to put some text or something. Bro, it's so funny. Oh, it's so gold, man. Someone in our Discord made this. And I laughed for maybe 10 minutes straight. <laughs> just, just so funny. The other one that <laughs> the other one that just makes me crack up is like the meme of the guy like looking down from the attic at like the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> and it's like, oh, there's our little investor. <laughs> <laughs> That's my yeah, favorite. Yeah. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one's gold too. Tucker, you need to down. How we looking, need, brother? You need to install light shot. Tucker, you need to install light shot. Dude, I don't know what it's not working. Just take a is screenshot it, of are the you picture. Massaging, make, make make the big the picture bigger and then take a screenshot and then copy paste the screenshot. Yeah. Let's do that. But you have to put the caption up there right after. <laughs> Tucker and technology. He has Apple Vision Pro, but cannot put a screenshot over his chart. There, <laughs> there we go. go. All right, now put the put caption above. The caption. Above. The caption. All but right, where's the caption? To copy paste it. it and then make. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Bro, that's gold. That's <laughs> absolute gold. Like, look at his face, too, man. Like, he's just. <laughs> just in despair <laughs> no it's funny because this weekend i was at my fiance's family reunion and people were asking me what i do and i'm like well i definitely don't <laughs> mean points at all or they're not going to take me seriously <laughs> Dude, the, I, you know, it's, the universal it's just, answer the universal answer is just say you work in the financial industry exactly because, <laughs> yeah. and, and if anything else is like I have no like my girlfriend after years she's like I have no idea what he's doing <laughs> every time you know someone asks her what am I doing she's like I really don't know to this day <laughs> he's like talking to people and doing something with charts <laughs> it's so funny man like I just recently met this other uh couple I'm in Florida with my wife and we were like talking and guy is super nice he's like yeah like what do you do for work and i was like i like paused and it's like do i tell him <laughs> <laughs> what do i even say how do we this guy's a, dude, this, guy, this, this guy's a doctor like this guy's a doctor <laughs> and M and md it's like yeah i i talk about digital assets with my friends that i met on the internet all day long I'm like dude it's over the it's phd over. of meme coin industry <laughs> for real Oh, ouch! That's gonna bounce soon, boys. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Needs I bet we get another big soul ripper before the USD outperformance. That's my bet. 
It's not going to bounce at all. The thing is about to outperform. It will, but Soul's mm-hmm. going to give it one more. But, uh, what, one more but what about Soul BTC then? What about Soul BTC? FVG filled, bounce it. Bounce it, Jackus. Yeah, it's time. Let's see. Can somebody go turn the Solana network back on? <laughs> hey, Will. Bullish. Bullish out of this. <laughs> Nobody can sell. <laughs> no, I mean, it's only bad if you use Radium. If you're using Jupiter, it's, in my experience, it was fine, but I could not use Radium at all. Dude, I was literally trying to buy uh, Jill Bowden the other day. <laughs> and I literally couldn't do it on radio. It wouldn't let me buy it, and I just gave up. I was like, all right. Jill Bowden. There's yeah. some questions there's our, in the chat, guys. There's our little investor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt. Yeah, that, that, meme, that meme is peak in the bear market. Right in yeah. the bear market, that's the thing. There's our little <laughs> investor. How is your cryptocurrency doing? <laughs> Tell oh us. And you are like there with the sad face, like, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> How's your little Bitcoin doing? Stop. Oh. And then at the peak of the. Just quick, no. at the peak of the bull market, everyone is like, please tell me, do I buy now? Please, what am I doing? <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, literally. Yeah, and the, the, there's the our police limit. thing, like, that shit annoys me. But um, the, 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 this one guy keeps asking over and over again, what made you switch to, to small caps? I, I really just want to come out and answer the question myself because, like, I mean, it's just higher risk. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what specific, you know, answer that they're looking for because they say, oh, "What what made you switch from to small caps all of a sudden?" As if you just switched or something like that. I, I, I don't I don't understand the concept. They they said that they were they've been a follower for a while. So if you want to answer that, oh oh, they're asking me. Okay, yeah. So it all goes back to the first. Well, I haven't switched to small caps, right? Like I haven't sold any of my majors or anything like that. But why the sudden interest in small caps? Well, it goes back to the first chart that that we have. Um, do you still have that up on another tab, Tucker? Like the ETH with all the, you know, like the others dominance and stuff like that? Because that's the answer to the question. And by the way, I do have like a 30-minute video coming out on precisely this. And I am cover I cover Andy. I, know I see a lot of you guys. You want to know about Andy. Um, you yeah there's a a big update coming it'll drop in like an hour and a half ed's editing it right now um but the answer you know to spoil it a little bit is it's this chart you could probably delete everything except for eth and others dominance that's that should be plenty Mm -hmm. Um, yeah so just keep eth and then others dominance so for this point in the cycle you know bitcoin having is in two weeks typically after bitcoin having bitcoin goes up um, once Bitcoin goes up after Bitcoin having, we see price discovery for ETH. What happens after that? We start to see, um, yeah, then we start to see like smaller cap altcoins represent a much larger portion of the crypto asset class, clearly by this chart, right? So that would imply this other's D chart that Tucker's highlighting in green. More or less what it would, would imply is that like if Bitcoin goes up three, you know, 300% from here. Your average as an index, your average mid cap to small cap altcoin should go up like, you know, 10 to 20 X compared to Bitcoin if it goes up 3 X based on historical trends. So, you know, why am I interested in like ultra risky stuff right now? Well, it's because some of them have the potential to, you know, go up 20, 30, 40 X. I haven't bailed on any, you know, of my majors. I'm just picking up some much more risky stuff and some of it's doing extremely well, right? But it's all based off of, you know, my my decision to get into some of like the higher, you know, high risky, you know, beta, beta, beta kind of stuff. It's solely determined by the position that Bitcoin is in and the position therefore that ETH is in and the position that therefore Bitcoin dominance and others dominance are in. Um, so again, it's just a, it's a small window of time where, you know, I feel comfortable, you know, playing with house money, you know, remaining very exposed to higher risk stuff because of where I think Bitcoin and Ether at 
in this cycle. Um, yeah, because you, you are kind of like, it reminds me so much of the situation when Bitcoin was trading around um, 18K, I believe. It was just coming from the FTX deviation. And I was like, at that point, I was like, hey, it's sitting right here on eco highs. You know, that was the January high it created down there. And I was like, it probably breaks these eco highs. And when that happens, that means it probably goes up there and breaks 20K, which means it breaks probably the higher time frame market structure, which means it probably starts to form a bottom accumulation here, which means it probably is going to start a new bull market from here. And it's like you think of that one scenario, which is a very tiny on the grand scheme of things down there, but you understand the sequence of things it will lead to, which is what you are basically doing right here, basically what you just said, right? You're like, I see where Bitcoin is heading. Therefore, I see where ETH is going, heading. Therefore, I see like where the super higher beta yeah. is probably going to head. And that's the max opportunity, literally max. Yeah, so it doesn't. It's, 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 hang on, hang on. This is like a once, in, you know, every once every three or four years, there's a window of time when you can get really deep into the trenches of altcoins, and it is relatively less risky than it normally is. It doesn't mean it's not risky, uh, but I do see like there's a couple things in here. So like Jordy asked politely, you said you're not going to promote anything under 100 million. Um, I, I definitely said that and that was it was kind of like a loose rule that we formed like let's just stick with majors you know at least for now but then I I, I don't know I guess I kind of look back and was like I'm probably being a little bit too cautious like there's a an interest from the market to learn about this stuff I think that us as a team and community are able to convey as safely as one possibly can like how to trade micro caps and altcoins and when to do it um and also there's a lot of other channels and accounts that have significantly bigger followings than us. Like, I mean, oh, well over hundred K on YouTube and like hundreds of thousands on Twitter that, I mean, talk about literal, literal garbage micro caps that they're getting paid to shill. So I'm like, we might as well try to prospect out ones that we're not getting paid to shill that we actually think have a fighting chance and we can educate people around how to try to get into them safely if they want to. Um, so I think it was more of just like a, I feel like there's a, a nice window of time here when playing in altcoins and on chain is less risky than it normally is. And also we're probably being a little bit too conservative because it's an important part of the crypto asset class. And, you know, of course we were a little hesitant to talk about it in the beginning, but um, you know, it's, again, it's, we're not here. Like we're not here to sh like, dude, I, let me just be totally transparent. Like me personally, I could literally make, over a hundred thousand dollars a week doing paid promotions for altcoins. Like you should see my DMs right now. I have not accepted a single one, and I am not going to. So, like, just know that like there's no, you know, there's no like hidden agenda. Like nobody's getting paid. We're literally just narrating what we're doing and trying to help projects, you know, succeed. That's literally it. So you'll probably see like when when Bitcoin dominance bottoms, like six to nine months from now, wherever that is. And we start to see others dominance, you know, form a distributive pattern. Like, you know, if you look at the chart between 2021 and 2022, you can see when it's kind of started to top. You're not going to hear me talking about altcoins anymore. It's literally just going to go to like capital preservation mode because we're probably nearing a cycle end. But I literally think the crypto asset class is about to rapidly expand to the upside. And I'm taking super risky plays and I'm just narrating what I'm doing. And I hope that people, you know, learn something from, from it. Cause it's not like, Hey, I just see a ticker and I, I got an early allocation. Let me talk about it. It's like, because Bitcoin's bullish and the halvings in two weeks, ETH is about to go into price discovery. When ETH goes into price discovery, we start to see others dominance move up. When others dominance moves up, we start to see everything that's a micro cap and mid cap send. So it's like, there's a small window of opportunity that comes around every few years where everybody can, you know, make a lot of money and, you know, hopefully be, be safe about it. So I get it. Like it's risky for us to talk about and, you know, most people will make money as they already have on, on some of this stuff. And uh, there's other people that will find this stuff way later. And unfortunately they'll probably lose money, but 
you know, we'll be covering it the whole way and, and trying to help, you know, educate people on the risks involved and, you know, that's it. So I, I, I just want to jump like it, it, it doesn't I mean, it doesn't even have to go that like that far in conference. Like it, there, there's an environment for risk and there's an environment for less risk and there's an environment for conservatism. Right. And I, I think a lot of people don't understand the difference in those. And we're going into a secular bull run. We're only in the mid market. Why would you not want to take on risk, right? Regardless, it, it, it could be the most ridiculous risk in the world. You, you, your risk, your most ridiculous risk in the world, if you pick the right ones, will be very profitable in the bull run. Even, even if you pick the wrong ones, you have a good chance of still making more money than what you put in 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 the in the top of the bull run because it just gets that ridiculous at the top. So like. It's it's about evaluating the environment that you're currently in, and then taking that environment and understanding it, and taking advantage of the environment, right? Not taking advantage of people, taking advantage of the environment. Because I can tell you, like the money that flew into Andy isn't because Max tweeted out Andy. It's a hundred percent not that at all. Like the money that flew into Andy is probably bots chasing volume and, and momentum. And then on top of that, whales seeing a lot of liquidity flow in a certain sector and jumping into it. And I think, like, if you see that in a lot of these coins, that's exactly what you'll see. If it was a pump and dump at the end of the day, as far as that goes for me, it would already be dead. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even exist right now. I'd be right back on the floor. Well, I something, that I, some, some, so, something that I addressed in the video that and, – and I – by the way, guys, like – and Joe, thank you so much for the super chat, man. Um, we'll see if we can get to it. Like, I – I'd kind of prefer to just like I'm gonna, I'm dropping a video on it in um, Ed, Ed's editing it right now. It'll be out in like probably just over an hour, maybe hour and a half, and you know you'll see some TA and, and we'll have a discussion on it. We'll, we'll we'll try to get to it at the end. I hope you understand. Um, you know, it's what was I gonna say? It's um, <laughs> I don't even remember. What, oh, well, what I was gonna say is no. Hang on. What what I was gonna say is like I gave equal coverage to like a dozen meme coins like prop a little less than a dozen meme coins like you know i talked about obviously pepe obviously doge right and then some of the smaller stuff like bobo moo moo uh Sneebu, like all these like pepe verse you know coins right like i i gave equal coverage ultimately like we're all beholden to the market at the end of the day like i gave equal coverage to all of them and the market ran with with andy um at least so far so, you know, it takes an army, right? Like, it's not because I'm necessarily like tweeting about it. I think it helps like provide some, you know, education and, um, you know, people are interested in it for sure. Um, but it's like, I gave equal coverage and like the market made a decision. So I'm leaning into it. It's that simple, you know? Well, the, 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 the thing is, is like, jo Jordy says, that's not my point. And it, it I'm not saying that that's that that's your point, Jordy. What I'm what I'm stating is I'm explaining to you how markets work. That that's what I'm explaining to you, is like when there is an environment for risk, you take advantage. It, it doesn't matter if 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 if, it, if you thought that it's an integrity play or not integrity play or any of that, right? Max is just understanding, evaluating the market. And yes, he took the stance that I'm not gonna you know shill anything under 100 mil, but he's realizing the environment. It's it's literally like if you don't do those, if if you don't look at these opportunities, opportunities as opportunities, you're leaving a lot of money on the table and nobody wants to leave money on the table, not even the market maker. And so he's expanded his thought process. He's going with his expanded thought process and he's playing on it. Like I'm not I'm not trying to speak for him specifically. I'm just trying to explain like the thought or the thesis behind why a person's uh, rationality or a person's. Uh, personal preferences can change in a market. Anybody's, anybody's, not just Max's, anybody's can change. Like, this is what changed me from like 2017 to 2021 and then 2021 to now. It's like, look, I went with a full risk on a portfolio this cycle. Last cycle, I was way more conservative because I wanted to, I wanted to really kind of grasp things and I wanted to be a little more careful and I wanted integrity, right? And I wanted integrity, but I'm realizing that integrity is not going to make people money, right? What 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 is well I won't say integrity. But you can be, you can have integrity and and shill a coin and and not have bad intentions. But 
integrity is is at the end of the day some people see that as conservatism conservative uh plays are is not necessarily integrity conservative plays are just you being extra cautious which is not going to make you a lot of money well, let's get back to the charts guys um yeah let, let's get back to the charts here um what are we seeing tucker I'm seeing Pepe, man. Seeing Pepe looking pretty solid here, dude. It really does, man. Like it. It's here's the thing, man. Like how these meme coins do is, it's really going to determine. It's going to be determined by the ceiling that, in my opinion, Whiff and Pepe set for them, right? Like if if Whiff and Pepe go to twenty billion. We're not going to see a lot of these like on chain ultra high risky plays that some of us are in do as well as we think they'll do very well but if we see like whiff and pepe go to 50 billion plus you know that really opens the door for a lot of these newer memes going to like two three four five billion um so yeah i mean i think the importance of of pepe and i mean even a step removed from that like doge right we need doge to go to like a dollar fifty two dollars because then that opens the door for pepe and whiff to go to you know 50 billion and then if if Whiff and Pepe go to 50 billion, then it opens the door for, you know, again, new entrants, new meme coins to go to a billion plus. So Pepe looks unreal here, honestly, man. Like it it looks really strong. And also, like, it's ETH beta. Like, if you charted Pepe against ETH, it's literally ETH beta. So if, we already looked at the ETH chart today, right? Like, so if, if the ETH chart um, you know, goes into price discovery, what do you think is gonna happen to Pepe, which is the best ETH beta out there? And we've yeah. got a pretty important date for meme coins coming up, guys. I mean, I don't know if anybody's mentioned it yet. As silly as it is, memes are probably going to pump into 420. Uh, I mean, <laughs> like, let's be honest. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what Doge did in 2021. You're probably right. Let's look at, let's do it. Uh, this one. Because, yeah, Pepe Whiff is interesting. It's basically still BTC on steroids is all it is. Actually, let's do the Mexi chart. So. Yeah, I mean, Whiff looks great, man. Did it tap five almost? They just, they leg up differently, you know, like <laughs> Pepe went, Pepe went like what, like 12x in a couple weeks <clears throat> with, with kind of, uh, is more so like, you know, just grinding higher, right? You know, it's still going up a lot, but it's not doing like, this little deal right it's not like pepe doing that whiff is just you know and it'll blow eventually right i'm sure it'll just it'll just blow off but you know it's it's probably worth having both right it's like you know i'd rather have i'd rather have both soul and eth than one or the other well i choose to play pepe and soul rather than soul and eth because just personal preference, but um, yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't have both. Honestly, I think Whiff. Looks I mean, great I mean these are the too. most liquid, levered spot longs on ETH and Soul, more or less, right? Like that—that's how I view Pepe and, and Whiff. Yeah, totally agree. Did you guys get the uh, the tensor drop? I did not. Dude, I'm sure you did. Anybody did. Got them. It's trading at two bucks right now. What is it, Tucker? Tensor, the uh, NFT marketplace on Soul. Mm. The thing's trading at two bucks. A, a bunch of guys in our Discord had like five figures of ten, like Tensor five figure, like ten thousand Tensor, and it's trading at two bucks right now. So that was a that was a pretty juicy airdrop. And there's more coming on Soul. What month. did you have to do to qualify for that airdrop? You all you had to do was use it, 
put bids in and then if you bought and staked one of their nfts a tensorian you got you got some tensor as well um but yeah that's a that's a pretty good size airdrop um but yeah camino will be out this month also so we're kind of getting a round two of soul airdrop season which should accrue value back to the base chain if i had to guess but yeah but tensorians aren't cheap either they're pretty pricey bro. no they're not they're like what are they right now i mean they were like 8k when i bought it like a month ago 7k maybe something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and i think they're only going to go up so you you might have got your money back for it that's about it Oh, you definitely got your money back. Man, I had somebody in my Discord that's been farming Tensorians for months now. He's got to be printing. I think he has like over 40,000 points. He just got 80K. Just dropped to him then. Yeah. That's wild. What I like about this airdrop season is that I feel like by the end of things, uh, there's going to be an airdrop you know, it, it's going to be hard not to receive a big airdrop, right? If you're just kind of participating within DeFi or within the ecosystem, because we've seen, you know, obviously uh, airdrops for deck swaps already. We've seen them. We have lending, pro more lending protocol airdrops on Solana that are probably coming out. Obviously, NFTs are getting airdrops uh, as well. You're going to see Dex perps get an airdrop here with Hyperliquid in the not so distant future. But uh, you know, I, I do think that by the end of this cycle, it's it's going to be really difficult to have not made money uh, on airdrops just because of all of the different avenues of opportunity that they've kind of been, you know, manifested through. Right. Uh, I mean, like as long as you're using DeFi on new or at least like where the activity on chain is the hottest, you, you've probably earned some free money along the way. I think Frintech's going to be the biggest. That's the one everybody faded, and it was basically free farm. And uh, yeah, big one. Yeah, I, I think uh, I I got to look at the whale whale market, but I think last time I looked, it was like five dollars or six dollars a point. And Tommy, I'm you're gonna literally going to retire from the uh, from the hyper liquid airdrop. <laughs> I hope so, man. <laughs> I hope so, dude. I hope so, but we'll see. I, I have never traded on hyper liquid before, Tucker. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm just kidding but yeah no um dex perps hadn't really had a great airdrop so i i do think i think friend tech will be the biggest airdrop that's coming until probably something like egan um or, or one of these other um you know point farms that you could have stuck ethan and made a ton on uh and then hyper liquid will probably be fairly close to it but i, I mean i really do agree with will a friend tech is going to be huge and especially if base doesn't have a native token to speculate on what are people going to bid as the proxy to bet on base they're going to bet on friend tech social fi um you know i i think that you saw the appetite for a primary base chain token even if base isn't going to release one i think they should honestly they might not but if they don't um you know we saw the appetite with dgen a few weeks ago it basically went up like seven or eight x in the span of a few days um, so that demand is there and capital wants more i mean there's clearly a demand for more tokens to speculate on on base chain so uh, I, I do think that friend tech will probably be the biggest beneficiary of that. Yeah. yeah. I, I know a lot of people want blast to be the biggest one, but friend tech was just there before blast. And if you look at the airdrop farm, like the utility of friend tech is just stronger. Like DGN, DGN's a strong, strong play because it's a mean turn utility. But I think at the end of the day, that mean turned utility will start to fade it away because it, it basically grasped on utility. Whereas like friend tech is just a natural farm of, of your friends essentially, um, or people that follow you that, that you know that want to be your friends. Those those people are typically involved with that more, and it has a stronger use case because them having a direct link to you is is more valuable in in dollars than anything. What do you guys think of Blast as a whole? Do you guys like it or no? A big casino that's gonna basically take everybody's money. <laughs> I mean, tell me how you really feel, Will. Tell yeah. me how you really feel. <laughs> the house always wins, bro. I'm just saying. That's true. That's true. So far, liquidity. I mean, so far, token pumps on Blast haven't been that sticky. Uh, I know there was that one gaming token called Yield that 
pumped for a bit and now I'm not sure how it's doing. I know it was down a pretty good bit from the highs, but yeah, uh, I know there's been some controversy as far as blast points and how they were awarded. Cause I know Pac-Man who is also the creator of blur. And if you were farming blur, you got destroyed. Uh, so if you were farming blast, yeah. points, it's, it's not a surprise that they kind of rugged the guys who stake their ETH in the protocol. And basically, you know, cause you had to lock up your ETH for, however many months, I think they basically said, yeah, if you keep it locked in for another few months, you'll get like 10 X your points. Uh, so mm. nobody's going to withdraw their E <laughs> if, if their points are going to be diluted to, to high heavens and in, in just a few months, I, I don't know if that was ever approved, but, um, yeah, I, I, I have a little bit of personal hesitation with blast, but it's one of those things where you have to imagine as liquidity comes back, it will probably do well at some point. Um, especially if they manage to integrate with some other chains. I, I, I would like to, yeah, and, and I completely agree. I think that's why there's there's a lot of hesitation for liquidity to, to stay on Blast is because people are fearful of, because of the whole Blur thing. But I think, like, somebody has brought up a, a great one, too, and somebody brought up Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain, to me, is just, it's, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's, it's confusing. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it, it's like, okay, we're going to copy all your assets onto our chain. W what does that mean? What, what, what exactly does that mean? Like, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Are you just replicating? Are you creating liquid on, on your chain? And then, you know, it exists on both. They're like, like it, 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 it theoretically to me is this, it's a fictitious scenario of, you know, liquidity existing on one chain that doesn't really exist on that chain. And it's just there as far as numbers on a screen, but not necessarily there as far as liquidity. What, what, what do you think on Pulse Chain there, Tommy? I know it's something we haven't really talked about, but. I don't really have an opinion on Pulse Chain. I know that I completely faded it last summer and there actually was some pretty big opportunity there. So, um, it, I mean, some of these chains, man, they have so little attention on them at the moment that the risk reward is probably really high to getting long them if you're right right i mean just the, the thing is you just don't know what chains uh, liquidity is going to return to and i this is why i've kind of preached uh, before that you know i i'm, I'm kind of waiting for this these L1s, like who's going to be the first L1 to have their AVAX rush moment in September of 2021, or, or maybe it was August of 2021, because after that, you know, not only did we see AVAX go up like five or six X in the span of a few months, but the ecosystem was loaded with opportunity and a ton of new people came over to the chain. Um, it really helped, you know, further ignite, <laughs> you know, the L1 versus ETH trade. Um, I'm, and I think part of that too is going to be, you know, which big crypto VC fund uh, is going to champion some, one of these L1s. Uh, so I'd, I'd pay attention to those headlines because I remember in the, that summer in 2021, <laughs> I, I remember uh, 3AC really championed Avalanche. And then, you know, after that, they announced the huge eco fund. So those are things that will probably be somewhat correlated, at least as far as like figuring out you know, which, which one of these chains is not just going to have the native token really pump, but have the ecosystem opportunity uh, of something like base or Solana that, that have already shown the cycle. Yeah, hey, but Tucker, it, it, I, I need a, I need a favor from you real quick, Tucker. Hmm. Um, could you please put in ticker soybean right now? Oh, I, I knew it was that. coming. I I knew oh, it. No. Yeah. <laughs> because we have 309 people watching on YouTube. And we have 120 likes. Guys, boo. We're, not even, we're not even halfway boo. there. Yeah, boo. <laughs> That's right. Boo. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're here for free. Trying to trying to hang out and, and provide education and perspective. All that we ask in return is you guys just take one quick moment. Do us a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, guys. It really does wonders for the channel. It does wonders for our growth. It really helps us. It helps us grow tremendously. I always say this, but I dream to live in a world where we don't need likes one day and we can just grow without likes. But the mega cap tech overlords request, and they have very clear instructions that we must get likes on the video in order for the content to be pushed. So, guys, please do us a solid. Hit that like button. Also, if you are new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Again, we are live Monday through Friday 
hanging out, talking markets. I'd love to run this up to at least 200 likes, guys. We have over 300 people on YouTube. I feel like we could at least get 200 likes real quick. Like, I feel like that shouldn't be a big problem. Like we have right now, we have 150 people that are sitting there with their arms crossed going, mm, no, nah, I'm not going to like it. No, nah, not, not for me. I'm just, I'm just going to take in all this free content and I'm not even going to like it. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. You know, we still love you, but we would appreciate if you would, you would lower those arms from a cross position and support the boys by throwing us a like. And guys, you'll, you'll have good karma, guys. If you press the like button, karma <laughs> will come back to you. That's right. It works. It it works inversely as well. You you have two point five k on Twitter. Somebody said, by the way. Yeah, that's I don't nice. know how the viewership yeah. goes with Twitter, man. It's kind of like I don't know if I believe it, but if it's if it the, the Twitter numbers are real, I'm obviously happy that that many people are watching. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's real, man. I, I think it no. We we discussed it. It it counts. It counts up the people that join. It doesn't I go also, down. I also think it's pretty easy to bot these, and like a lot of people just fluff up their numbers, man. Like it's Twitter. I I mean, it's a great place to stream, right? But it's not a, exactly a super realist. Like you you have to you have to be a little bit skeptical. Like it's very easy to like bot them, and then also. It, it counts your total amount of people that have viewed it, not what's actually in your live audience. So again, it's, it's much different. YouTube, it's, it's very honest. Like it's just whatever you see is what you get, you know? So we have 312 people on YouTube. That's 100% correct. All right. We got 200 likes. Thank you guys. All right. Cool. All right. There's still 112 of you that haven't liked it, but that's all right. So I, I just, I wanted to cover one last thing and then we can move forward, but um, I'm not, I'm not at all like talking down on Pulse Chain. I am, I am genuinely interested to see like what the ecosystem has because nobody's talking about it. Same thing with B and B. I don't think anybody's talking about it. I want to look where people aren't talking. Wait, um, Will. Wait, Will. What? I know you meant. He said nobody's talking about B and B. Well, no, no. I, you, you get what I'm saying. Like it's, it's not the hype. <laughs> like nobody, nobody's yeah. hyping these, these chains. And so I'm genuinely interested where nobody's hyping. Um, not not to say that nobody's talking or looking at them, but nobody's hyping them. And and so I am genuinely interested. I just I don't understand the whole pulse chain. Like I understand it, but I don't understand it. Right? Like you can say something, but like you got to prove it theoretically. And I don't I don't feel like it's been proven. Um, and that's the part where I get confused. But I'll, I'll I'll dig into it more. I'll dig into it more. But uh, yeah, I, I was just trying to get your guys' thoughts on the whole Paul's chain discussion because I thought it was interesting. I don't know anything about Paul's chain, man. I'll be honest. I don't know anything about it. But yeah, the either, looks good. Uh, Richard Hart's chain, right? With Hex. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Good lord, look at this thing. Bro, BNB is ripping to new all time highs for four digits. It's it's printed all over the chart. Yeah. And, it really and is. nobody's talking about it. Nobody nobody's hyping it. Nobody's Jack talking is about the only it, person I've seen talk about BNB, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Because because yeah. do you know why nobody's talking about BNB? Because everyone fucking charted the bottom and told short and strong <laughs> single digits are coming and now they are liquidated. We, man. we were so both talking about that about though, about Jacket. <laughs> we we were both talking yeah. about that. In the bottom of the bear, I was like, look, I was like, if, if you're if you're shorting if you're shorting BNB, you're gonna get your head taken off. You're gonna lose all your money. And Here's the deal. You you time, don't you don't short against the cartel. You don't do that. I don't trade BNB. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I really wanted to see it break down to like a hundred bucks, you know, and that would no, be like too. a deviation. Like I didn't, I didn't trade it. I didn't want to trade it because like you're trading against the Godfather. Obviously, I tried to trade BNB one time and just immediately got like taken out. So I was like, I'm done, man. <laughs> As for somebody else, we had those I, I wanted to, Max. We had those. I conversations wanted to see bear. that. I wanted to see that deviation, man. I wanted funny. to see it just. But the deviation right happened. J just. That's 200 bucks. Yeah. It, <laughs> but I know it, what it, you it, meant. I know what you Yeah. Meant. It would have been so funny. entertaining to watch that. Listen, everyone, 
everyone saw they are getting the the free trade they were like look at what happened to ftt it went to zero i'm gonna short bnb and it's going to go zero and everyone thought it's going to be that easy like like everyone thought they are giving you this golden opportunity to short and get a free money everyone thought that it was yeah. like do you really think the market makers will let you do that <laughs> absolutely not no, never. Funny, funny they never, story. No freebies. With BNB, I always said, like, even if you're bearish on the market, don't trade BNB. And I, I was That's very true. good about never trading BNB. And then I tried to trade it one time, one time uh, <laughs> during that during that range. And within five minutes, there was a headline that sent price like to my to like a really small <laughs> positions liquidation. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not I'm not trading BNB ever again. <laughs> that, that I want to point out one thing that I've seen there in the chart. If you could scroll out a little bit more, Tucker, there, Tucker, that that's another pennant, just like ETH. That is another pennant forming. Yes, that looks so yeah. bullish. Man. It looks, guys, yeah, guys, it looks do, way do you know what's bullish. crazy? Do, yeah, do you know what's crazy? I ran a poll. I do not know if you guys saw that, but I was like, "What hits new all-time high first? ETH, BNB, or Sol?" And I'm telling you, only like 7% of the people, or let's say 10%, I don't exactly remember, voted for BNB. Only only 10%. Everyone else was like Solana hits uh, all-time high first, then it was ETH and BNB last. And if you look at the charts, if you just open the fucking damn charts, you would see that like it's so obvious that BNB, well, we cannot obviously say ahead, but like BNB looks, it's going to be the first. Well, B and B and ETH are both reared the same way. Draw, draw that top, that top resistance line there, Tucker, too, just so they can see that perfectly formed pennant there. Like that thing is beautiful, man. That is a beautiful pennant, and it's actually more bullish than what ETH was because ETH was a little more downtrend. That one's a little more uptrend if you look at it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it looked a little bit. I mean, here, let's put ETH next to it. Bro, the reason no one's talking about BNB is because literally nobody owns it anymore. No one publicly yeah. owns it. Like, yeah, it's just everyone missed it. You know, they I, I I do have some in my trust wallet, but I use it to trade for BNB chain. <laughs> and there is still so much incentive to hold BNB if you are on Binance. Like, I I wouldn't be interested too much in like trading it, but I'm interested in holding the spot. Yeah, I mean it looks similar. BNB does look a little bit more bullish, but put on BNB East chart. BNB East, it's tradable in Binance. Yeah, both of those charts look solid, man. It just BNB looks stronger. Yeah, it from does. a pennant perspective. And and for those of you who keep bringing up all like your meme coins, like th these L ones are good indications of your meme coins go up. You can so you can you... put B BNB East chart from Binance. It's an actual tradable chart there if you want to. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Just type BNB East. Do, do, do you see that deviation down there in BNB East chart? It had. What, this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, this whole thing's just been in a range for a long time. For a real long time, but... Deviation, bro. <laughs> see what do you guys want to look at i do remember by the way i have to congress to tommy i remember when he said that like uh you know he said at the he said i'm not gonna trade bnb but i wouldn't recommend shorting bnb because you are essentially you know if anything you want to short something else because bnb is going to get uh, manipulated a lot and you don't want to trade against the godfather that's that's what he's been constantly saying when we are trading down at the 200 to 220 dollar range down there 
I did. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Jackis. I, I probably should have taken it one step further in hindsight like you did. It is a manipulated coin, and I knew that, and I should have just bought it. Because <laughs> manipulated coins tend to go higher. Remember what you said, Tommy? Feature it's not a bug. bug. Yeah, Feature there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Under, just sub submit to it, man. All markets are manipulated. You want to know what the most manipulated market in the world is? Forex. TradFi. Well, yeah. Forex, probably, yeah, Forex, but TradFi, yeah. Yeah, I mean, go look at, dude, go look at the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. That shit is completely manipulated, man. They do everything in their power to make that thing up only. Just submit to it. That's why I don't understand people that want to be like, you know, a professional short seller, you know, or like a, like a perma bear. I'm like, dude, it's so much easier to just literally look at that and go chart dipped. They can't let it fail. The world would literally get destroyed. Yeah. I will buy, you know, turn your brain off. Look at that thing, man. At, like go back even further, Tucker, like literally just zoom out, bro. Like whenever anything bad happens, they literally just drop interest rates and print money and look at that chart. It's literally <laughs> that simple. Just like buy it when everybody thinks the world is over and then the government's going to step in and just manipulate it back to all time high. The real shit coin was TradFi all along. <laughs> <laughs> it was dude look at that thing it literally it's it looks like a like a deck screener shit coin that's like sub 10 mil market cap like, it does, dude. it's a multi-decade multi t-wop right there man yeah and then the government has the audacity to be like oh like like the, the wage gap and like the discrepancy between like the lower class and, <laughs> and upper class is like it's so wrong like it's because of the billionaires and it's like no, it's because of your policy that enables them to buy a chart like this when lower income people don't have the ability to even invest because they don't have any extra money. So when rich people get to DCA into this Ponzi and poor people don't have that ability, then you get the huge wage gap and it's the government's fault. But then you have politicians running on campaigns promising to you know, close that gap. Just literally just submit and just look at this chart and go, it's manipulated as hell. I'm going to throw my net worth in this thing and leave it. And every time it dips, just buy more. You know, all these like 1928 crash callers. Like, I'm like, dude, you are literally like, you are a mouth breather, man. Like, you do not understand <laughs> how deep this Ponzi runs. Like, and you can't even have something like, like, you know, Black Monday or the Great Depression anymore because there's, there's literally circuit breakers in place that don't allow for that to happen. Talk about manipulation. It's the antithesis of a free market. If it makes too much, they turn the chart off. <laughs> Can you That's imagine true. that? Like, like, like people are just cool with it. Like that is so manipulated, man. There's no free market. They literally halt trading. Beach or not a bug. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would I would say that bond market is probably the most manipulated, to be honest with you. But say it again. You well, know, it is what it is. Would, I said would, I, would, I, I would say the bond market is probably the most manipulated. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 all are, and we can like yeah, that's in the log. This is literally in log scale. <laughs> but dude, it's like I'm not even mad about it. I'm like that's fantastic. It's just gonna keep doing that. It's going to keep doing that right there unless the U.S. moves to an equity, an equity collateralized currency rather than than a debt collateralized currency. They're just going to continue to run up the national debt, debt, stimulate the economy and then just bubble between hiking interest rates and cutting interest rates for the next five decades. And it's literally just going to go, like you're going to see the S&P 500 go to like 40K over the next 50 years. Just like it, turn your brain off. I don't even know what else to say. Like, Look at this thing, man. Tucker, pull up United Healthcare. Do, do you know, Max? Do you know what else had a circuit breaker lately, the past week? No. What? No. <laughs> the good. Oh. Solana. The gold. No, 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 no. Well, definitely the like button, but uh, <laughs> yeah. the the gold in China, you know, uh, they actually had that they, they actually had to. Listen, they actually had to halt trading on gold in China because the price was skyrocketing too quickly. Like, really? Yes, two times in the past week. Because imagine, pe imagine what's going to happen to Bitcoin. <laughs> people, people there are lining up 
in a kilometer long QEs to buy physical gold. It's absolutely insane. People are just not paying attention to this. And it's uh, like, like people are not appreciating this enough. Well, you called it a long time ago, Jack, because you literally told everybody exactly what was going to happen. Not that there'd be a circuit breaker halt on gold, but like that gold, there'd be so much yeah. demand for gold that it, it couldn't be met by the market. So it's it's going to be unfolding like it's like it's still being called. It, it's going to be called for the next many years is what people don't get. But they, they think like, all right, it was it. No, that wasn't it. That's just the beginning. But you're you're still more bullish on Bitcoin than you are traditional commodities like gold and silver, correct? Or is that changed now? But no, because everything is relative, right? So again, it's like at the beginning of the show, we had the discussion. We had the discussion of uh, wait one sec. Uh, sorry, I'm like, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, sorry, at the beginning of the show, we had a discussion of the risk, right? And we were like, uh, all right, th these are some very lower cap coins and it's a high risk and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Bitcoin folks will look at mid cap and say, hey, that's too risky, right? But we forget and they will be like, all right, we are investing in, you know, Bitcoin. That's super, super sophisticated and, you know, no risk. Uh, but, but these mid caps, that's too much risk. I do not want to bother with that. And then there will be TreadFi guys and they will look at the same at Bitcoin. They'll be like, hey, I'm buying, you know, stocks. That's like super sophisticated. I'm totally okay with it. But that Bitcoin thing, that's too risky. And then there will be bond investors and they'll be like, you know, bonds are very safe. You have the government back in it. But stocks, that's too risky. You never know what's going to happen there. So it's all relative, you know, to how you first understand the asset class and second uh, the risk profile of the people and the same thing goes you know with the with the commodities uh and btc and classical ones because bitcoin is undoubtedly a digital commodity but it's the lowest market cap one uh and it's going to get appreciated so much more because it's an emerging emerging commodity you know so if, if you're going to have you know Gold going up, silver going up, oil going up. You'll have Bitcoin going up too, but it's treat it, it's going to be treated like an altcoin to these commodities for 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 the whole world that is going to be trading. So like gold and oil is in this in this view of the world is like Bitcoin. Gold and oil is like a Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin itself is like a shitcoin to the commodity section, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, that, that's basically how you can put it to the real folk. Like most boomers and central bankers and everyone, you know, they, they'll be like, yeah, gold, you know, gold, that's the, you know, safe bet. That's, you know, that's the Bitcoin. And then they'll look at Bitcoin and be like, no, 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 that, that's too risky. You know, that, that's for degens. <laughs> so it's all relative. It's all relative. But yeah, listen, silver, gold, all going to go up, but Bitcoin will do multiples, multiples of that. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, silver, gold, Ooh. silver. That silver high time frame chart looked insanely bullish. Yeah, by the way. it did. That looks really bullish too. Honestly, silver, gold. Yeah, S silver always. Bottom. Silver always outperforms at the end of the gold cycle. So again, I'll, silver is kind of like ease to BTC, right? <laughs> Silver just outperforms at the end. Uh, Bitcoin Ooh. is at 72K right now, by the way. Oh, yes, goodness. Sir. Look at that. Who could Dude, have that, seen? That gold breakout <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, it is. What do they say about four taps at four taps at resistance? I see four pretty taps clear. Four tap. Cheeto. Cheeto in the door. That's the white well, wolf meme. Listen, this is exactly like right. This comment says it all. <laughs> it's just the what I just explained. Some people will look at BTC and think of it as a shitcoin. Basically, like the way we think of BTC and altcoins, and we call them shitcoins, right? Like Bitcoin maxis will look at that and call that shitcoins. Some people will look at gold 
And then some people will have gold and be like, yeah, this is the sophisticated asset. This is the Bitcoin, right? In, in the thinking process. And they will look at Bitcoin and be like, that's the shit coin. Like you don't buy them. That's, you know, for the DJs, for the apes out there in our language, basically. Yeah. Um, well, guys, we've been going for about an hour 15. I think if there's any final thoughts, feel free to mention them, but probably a good place to start wrapping up. Yeah, no, I'm good. We looked at a lot today. For sure. Good Lance, start the week. Take, we take us out, Lance. We, we did cook. cook. All right, guys. Um, just a reminder, uh, real quickly. Um, as we mentioned last week, we did launch one of our new flagship products, guys. That is the BB Academy. That is a place for you guys to be able to learn from uh, the entire team. It's a very digestible course and covers just about everything that you can possibly ask for as far as navigating these markets go. So uh, make sure to check that out. We have links to that uh, probably in the description of this YouTube as well as on our Twitter. We obviously also have links through our Discord and through multiple tweets, but it's something that we worked very hard on. It was about nine months in the making. So a lot of effort went into it and um, you know, very happy with how the product turned out. So make sure to check that out. Uh, there's something from all of us in there. Um, yeah. Um, but as far as our programming goes, guys, uh, a reminder that Market Check will return tomorrow morning, typical start time around 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and, and that show, you know, our, our Market Check show typically runs a little over an hour. As you guys can see, we talk markets, we talk charts, trading, uh, everything in between. I always say you never know the direction that these shows are going to go. Uh, Market Check's a great example of that. But at the end of the day, we always have a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, if, if you're a first time viewer, uh, welcome. We hope you will tune in again and we hope you enjoyed the content. Of course, we also have our flagship show, uh, Market Talk. Timing can somewhat vary throughout the day, but we always post about it through our Twitter uh, the day of as far as the timing. So make sure to stay subscribed to our Twitter or, or stay follow, following our Twitter. Set us on notifications if you don't want to miss those spaces. You can set alerts for when we go live. And Market Talk is always hosted by King Wabi. He does an exceptional job uh, on those spaces. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just like Market Check in the sense that you never know uh, the direction that the conversation can end up going. You know, we can talk macro, bonds, equities. We can talk meme coins, uh, crypto, VC scams, <laughs> and everything in between. But um, yeah, we know you guys are, are going to enjoy this content that, that we're going to be bringing you guys into the Bitcoin halving, which is only two weeks away. So uh, very exciting stuff coming, not just for crypto, but we also have some exciting announcements coming for you guys here over the next few weeks as well. So not going to reveal what they are. But we do have uh, some really exciting stuff coming down the pipeline for you guys. So stay tuned uh, to what BB is bringing for you guys. But that's it from us, guys. That'll about wrap up the show for us. Um, for our Giga Chads, we will see you on the afternoon call later today. Uh, and for everybody who is going to watch Market Talk, obviously, we'll see you for that. If not, we'll see you tomorrow for Market Check at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks again, guys. and Have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week.